Hi, this is Erica Cruz, and I'm here to present to you my concept theory presentation for DNPU 705. Okay, so um, the model that was chosen for me was the stages of change model. Um, there's different names for it. It's important to know all the different names because um, it's been studied across different disciplines. So um, there's three different names usually that, that we use for it. It's called the stages of change model, stages of behavior change model, or I think it's best known as the trans theoretical model. And it was first developed in 1983 by uh, two authors. Their names were Prochaska and De Clementi. Um, back in 1983. Alright, so the stages of change model, what exactly is it? This model is, it actually describes a phenomenon of how people modify a problem behavior or acquire a positive behavior. So as you can see, it's extremely, extremely relevant to uh, being a nurse practitioner or in the medical field because this is the, the way by which our patients will take information that we give them and try to modify their behaviors to adopt healthy ones. So um, it consists of five stages. The first stage um, is called pre-contemplation. So in this stage, the patient really has no intention of, adop of adopting a recommended health behavior. They're actually in the process of learning about this behavior. So as an example, I would take smoking cessation because that's what's been applied to this model uh, quite a few times. Um, so in, in this first stage in pre-contemplation, the individual's not really considering a change, kind of like an ignorance is bliss attitude. Um, they're not going to take action in the foreseeable future, but maybe in the next six months it might be possible. As clinicians, it's important to use techniques like validating their lack of readiness, why are they not ready to change, encourage reevaluation of the current behavior, you know, explain to them that it's not necessarily a healthy behavior and that it has to change encourage self-exploration and explain and personalize the risk to them should they continue to follow this behavior. When they're ready, they're going to move into stage two. Stage two is called contemplation. So now the individual is uh, considering adopting this recommended health behavior. So the smoker is thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I should start, you know, quitting smoking. Um, still a little bit ambivalent about the change, kind of sitting on the fence. Um, as clinicians, nurse practitioners, we can encourage the patient to evaluate the pros and cons of the behavior change. Uh, we can um, evaluate their image and you know see how they can change or make a positive change in their self-image by actually making this change. Um, identify and promote new and positive outcome expectations. You know, start really educating them about how wonderful their life would be and how great their health would be if they would just stop smoking. All right, so when they're ready to move on to stage three, it's called decision. So now they've actually made the concrete decision to adopt this recommended health behavior. The smoker has decided it's time to stop smoking. Um, now I'm ready to, you know, move on and try to change my life. Um, so here it's kind of an iffy situation because the patient is just kind of testing the waters. They've made the decision, but nothing is really set in stone yet. They're, they're planning to act within the first month. So as clinicians, it's really important to start encouraging them. Uh, continue to have them evaluate the pros and cons of this behavior change and try as much as possible to, to promote the, the, the pros of this, of this behavior change. Um, um, continue to explain to them the positive outcomes. And it's so important to have them take small initial steps. You don't want to push them head first into this this new world because they might get scared and back out. So it would be very encouraging to have them take small steps. Um, maybe have them start act, having them enroll in health education classes, talking to other counselors, um, buying a self-help book, or um, you know, adopting a new self-change approach, um, and maybe start joining um, um, like a support groups and things like that. When they're ready to move from stage three to stage four, it's really great because in stage four they have gone to action. So here they're actively trying to adopt the recommended health behavior for a short period of time. So they're, act, they're working towards this de desired behavior change. They are modifying their environment, making drastic changes to their behaviors, making big modifications to the lifestyle within the past six months. And at this stage, the clinician should be uh, really actively working against relapse. 
So some techniques is probably to help the individual in restructuring their social su support and their cues. Um, you know, make sure that they're able to uh, maintain this healthy behavior by, you know, doing certain things. Um, you know, exercising, trying to divert their attention away from smoking. Um, you know, maybe chewing gum. You know, just some some diverting behaviors. Um, enhance self-efficacy for dealing with these obstacles and really try to help guard against feelings of loss and frustration because when you're quitting smoking this is an, an, an addictive pattern that you're trying to break so it's really important to guard against that um, that loss um, and always validate their behavior and try to show them that they're making a change for the better Stage five is called maintenance, and here we're focusing on the ongoing active work to maintain the change and relapse and prevent against relapse. So the patient is actually continuing to perform the recommended health behavior for a long period of time, for at least six months. That's the that's the time frame. Um, their health behavior is incorporated in, in their routine and their lifestyle, and as clinicians, this translates to great success for us because this is what we want our patients to do. We want them to take those positive health behaviors and have them maintain it and have it become part of their healthy lifestyle. No more smoking, you know, exercising, healthy diet, all these good things will start to happen. You don't lose weight, their blood pressure will go down, um, and they, if they maintain it, that's excellent. We've succeeded in our job as clinicians. And we really don't want them to go get, uh, into relapse, so we, you know, constantly follow up with them and encourage them and, um, you would have to be supportive. Okay, so this brings me into implementing the trans theoretical model. So what did I find that showed innovation? Okay, I actually found a wonderful article because it applies very much so to my dissertation project. And my dissertation project centers around modifying behaviors for diabetic patients. Article I found is called Changes in Diabetes Self-Care behaviors make a difference in glycemic control. So the objective here, the researchers, they compared a diabetes treatment as usual, or TAU, with Pathways to Change, PTC. Now Pathways to Change is the innovation because this was adopted directly from the trans theoretical model, for the trans theoretical model to determine whether or not this um, intervention would result in greater readiness to change greater increases in self-care and improved diabetes control. So what are the components of the Pathways to Care? It, it is comprised of self-care interventions delivered by phone and mail with or without personal contact. It's based on stage-based personal feedback reports and the, there are self-help manuals and newsletters delivered by mail to the patients. One of the huge plus sides of this uh, Pathways to Change is that it has the potential to reach large numbers of individuals who do not participate in current healthcare systems. So this intervention is great because it's reaching out to people who don't necessarily have the access um, or who might not have health insurance, who have poor access to care. It goes from the remote directly to them so that they have this information. Okay, so in the results, they were able to recruit about a thousand people to, in this study, and they measured three different outcomes. The first outcome is called self-monitoring of blood glucose, or SMBG, and we all know that consists of, um, you know, the, the patient having their own blood glucose monitor and strips and the lancets. They take their blood glucose three times a day. They should take it um, before meals and then at bedtime, um, ideally. So you can see the results here. 43.4% of people in the Pathways to Change model moved to stage 4, the action stage, versus 27% of people who only had the usual care plus their glucose strips, and then 18.4% who only had the usual care alone. And these results are statistically significant. The second, um, the, okay, the second outcome that they measured was healthy eating, and by healthy eating intervention they mean um, following a healthier diet that's more geared towards um, uh, fat that's you know limiting carbohydrate fat intake things like that 32.5% of people in the pathways to care group um, were able to move to the action stage of healthy eating versus 25.8% of people in the usual care and this is statistically significant third outcome that they measured was smoking cessation 
24.3% uh, of people in the Pathways to Care move to action versus only 13.4% in the usual care uh, with a P value of less than 0 0.03. So it is also statistically significant. So you can see how the trans theoretical model, this 30 year old model, has been used, is continually being used today to implement new and innovative changes to healthcare. It's being used to um, modify behaviors in across different um, different illnesses and different conditions, diabetes being one of them. So it's a wonderful thing to have these um, old models being revamped and revised to be applied to um, current healthcare. And as you can see by the results, it actually is working and helping people move to the action stage, which increases their chances of them moving to the maintenance phase and maintaining, therefore, helping them maintain positive, healthy behaviors for the long term. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, you can contact me um, or if uh, you, know, you want to help on looking for more articles that have to do with them. Um, behavioral changes and your dissertation project, that would be fine by me. Just contact me. And these are my references. Thanks again.